Messianic Fulfillment, Journey to Jerusalem. Jesus' Preparation and the Cost of Discipleship. Introduction to Messianic Fulfillment, Part 2. In this segment, we delve into Jesus' preparation for his departure as he leaves Galilee and heads toward Jerusalem. This journey marks a significant phase in Jesus' ministry as he intentionally moves toward the full culmination of his mission. During this time, Jesus teaches through parables that reveal profound truths about his identity and mission. He particularly focuses on the church, showing how he trains his apostles and invests them with the authority necessary to carry on and rule in his place. This preparation underscores the, the, the transition from Jesus' earthly ministry to the establishment of the church as his representative on earth. The journey, Jesus set his face toward Jerusalem. In Luke chapter 9, verse 51, it is written, When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. This statement highlights Jesus' resolute determination to fulfill his mission, knowing that it will lead to his suffering and death. According to biblical scholar Richard Dillion, this journey serves as a framework for the formation of the disciples. As Jesus travels toward Jerusalem, he is accompanied by his followers. This journey is not just a physical movement, but a trans transformative experience where, he, where Jesus teaches and prepares his disciples for the challenges ahead. Throughout this journey, Jesus gradually reveals what it means to be a true follower. He emphasizes the cost of discipleship, the necessity of self-denial, and the importance of complete dedication to God's kingdom. This period of travel and teaching is essentially a formation program where individual disciples as well as the nascent Christian community are molded into faithful followers of Christ. Jesus' interactions and teachings during this journey are crucial in shaping the understanding and commitment of His disciples. Themes in Luke's Presentation Luke's Gospel presents various themes that are integral to understanding Jesus' mission and the nature of the Kingdom of God. Among these themes are servanthood, faith, concern for the poor, outcast, and oppressed, the mission to the Gentiles, and the call to reach the least, last, and lost. This, these themes highlight the inclusivity and impartiality that Jesus exemplifies in his ministry, emphasizing that the kingdom of God is open to all, especially those marginalized by society. Messianic Coming and Expectation In the first century, there was a strong expectation of the Messiah among the Jewish people. This expectation varied. Some anticipated a political Messiah who would liberate the Jews from Roman rule, while others, particularly Christians, saw the Messiah as the suffering servant prophesied in Isaiah. This diversity of expectation is evident in the differing, differing reactions to Jesus' ministry. While some embraced Him as the promised Savior, others rejected Him because He did not conform to the expectations of a political deliverer. The Christian understanding of the Messiah as a suffering servant is rooted in passages like Isaiah chapter 53 which speaks of a figure who bears the sins of many and is afflicted for their transgressions. Jesus embodies this role through his life, death, and resurrection, fulfilling the prophecies and reinterpreting the concept of messianic deliverance in a spiritual rather than a political context. Discipleship 
Discipleship, as described by Jesus, requires readiness for a life of insecurity and sacrifice. In Luke chapter 9, verse 58, Jesus says, The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. This statement underscores the transient and uncertain nature of following Jesus. He emphasizes that the proclamation of the kingdom must take precedence over all personal concerns. In Luke chapter 9, verse 60, Jesus tells a potential disciple to leave the dead to bury their own dead, highlighting the urgency and paramount importance of the mission over customary social obligations. Jesus involves others in his mission. Luke chapter 10 describes Jesus sending out 70 disciples illustrating his strategy of involving others in his mission. These disciples are sent out in, par in pairs to towns and places where Jesus himself intended to go, symbolizing the expansion of his ministry through his followers. Jesus instructs them to travel light, not to seek comfort or security, and to focus solely on their mission. This sending out of the 70 reflects the communal and participatory nature of Jesus' ministry, where the spreading of the gospel is a shared responsibility. The meaning and cost of discipleship. Following Christ demands significant sacrifices. In Luke chapter 14 verses 26 to 27, Jesus talks about the necessity of prioritizing Him above all else, even family, and being willing to keep one's cross daily. This symbolizes a daily death to selfish desires and the willingness to bear reproach for His name. The cost of discipleship is high, requiring a total commitment to Jesus and His mission. Jesus calls to give up all possessions in Luke chapter 14, verse 33. Further underscores the radical nature of discipleship, where material attachments must not hinder one's dedication to God's kingdom. The message, Jesus redefi redefines holiness. Traditional Jewish piety equated holiness with separation from uncleanness. Jesus, however, redefines holiness as inclusivity and impartiality. He teaches that holiness involves extending benefaction and welcome to those marginalized by the old system. This new definition of holiness is evident in Jesus' interactions with sinners, tax collectors, and Samaritans who were often shunned by the religious elite. Example the Good Samaritan. In Luke chapter 10 verses 25 to 37, Jesus tells the parable of the Good Samaritan to illustrate the redefined concept of holiness. In this parable, a Samaritan considered unclean by Jewish standards is the one who acts as a true neighbor by showing mercy to the injured man. This parable challenges the prevailing notions of purity and righteousness, emphasizing that true holiness is demonstrated through acts of compassion and mercy. Seeking the Lost, the parable of the prodigal son. In Luke chapter 15 verses 11 to 32, the parable of the prodigal son illustrates the father's love and willingness to restore a repentant sinner. This story highlights God's eagerness to welcome back His lost children, emphasizing the personal attentiveness of God towards each individual. The father in the parable, who eagerly awaits and joyfully receives his wayward son, represents God's boundless grace and forgiveness. The elder brother's reaction to the father's forgiveness of the younger son reflects the self-righteousness that Jesus often rebuked in the Pharisees. This parable underscores the joy in heaven over one sinner who repents and the inclusive nature of God's love, 
which transcends human judgments and boundaries. Conclusion The Messiah has come to restore those who are lost, and He invites His disciples to participate in this mission. Through their works and the grace of discipleship, the Kingdom of God is built up, reflecting Jesus' teachings and transformation. This mission of restoration and inclusion continues today, as followers of Christ are called to embody the same values of, of compassion, mercy, and radical commitment to God's Kingdom. Look on themes of Jesus' ministry. Introduction The Gospel of Luke is rich with themes that reveal the nature of Jesus' ministry and the Kingdom of God. These themes include servanthood, faith, concern for the poor, outcast and oppressed, the mission to the Gentiles, and the call to reach the least, last, and lost. Each of these themes highlights the inclusivity and impartiality that Jesus exemplifies in His ministry. Understanding these themes is crucial for comprehending the broader nature of Luke's Gospel and the message it conveys about the nature of God's Kingdom. Servanthood One of the central themes in Luke's Gospel is servanthood. Jesus models servanthood throughout His ministry, emphasizing that greatness in God's Kingdom is measured by one's willingness to serve others. In Luke chapter 22, verse 27, Jesus says, For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not that the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. This statement encapsulates the essence of Jesus' teaching on servanthood. He, the Lord and Master, took on the role of a servant, demonstrating that true leadership and greatness come from serving others. The theme of servanthood is also full illustrated in the parable of the Good Samaritan. In this, in this parable, the Samaritan goes out of his way to help a man who has been beaten and left for dead, showing that true neighbor, neighborliness involves the selfless service to those in need. This parable challenges the listeners to redefine their understanding of who their neighbor is and how they should act towards them. Faith Faith is another prominent theme in Luke's Gospel. Jesus consistently emphasizes the importance of faith in receiving God's blessings and miracles. In Luke chapter 7, verse 9, after healing the centurion servant, Jesus marvels at the centurion's faith, saying, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. This statement underscores the idea that faith is not limited to a particular ethnic or religious group, but is accessible to all who believe. The theme of faith is further explored in the story of the woman, who was healed of her bleeding. Despite the crowd pressing around Jesus, this woman's faith leads her to believe that simply touching the hem of his garment will heal her. Jesus acknowledges her faith and tells her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. This story highlights the personal nature of faith and its power to bring about divine intervention. Concern for the poor, outcast, and oppressed. Luke's Gospel places a strong emphasis on Jesus' concern for the poor, the outcast, and the oppressed. Jesus' ministry is characterized by his outreach to those marginalized by society. In Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 19, Jesus reads from the scroll of Isaiah, proclaiming, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This passage tells 
the tone for Jesus' ministry and his commitment to social justice. The parable of Lazarus and the rich man further illustrates Jesus' concern for the poor. In this parable, the rich man lives in luxury while Lazarus, a poor beggar, lies at his gate, covered in sores and longing for scraps of food. After their deaths, Lazarus is comforted in Abraham's bosom, while the rich man is tormented in hates. This parable underscores the reversal of fortunes in the kingdom of God and the importance of compassion and generosity towards the less fortunate. Mission to the Gentiles Another significant theme in Luke's Gospel is the mission to the Gentiles. Luke, a companion of Paul, emphasizes that the message of salvation is not confined to the Jewish people but is intended for all humanity. In Luke chapter 2 verses 30 to 32, Simeon, upon seeing the infant Jesus, declares, For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for a revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. This prophecy highlights the inclusive nature of Jesus' mission. The story of the healing of the centurion's servant also underscores this theme. The centurion, a Roman officer, demonstrates great faith in Jesus' ability to heal his servant. Jesus commends his faith, noting that he has not found such faith even in Israel. This story serves as a powerful reminder that faith and salvation are available to all regardless of ethnic or cultural background. The call to reach the least, last, and lost. Jesus' ministry is marked by his outreach to the least, last, and lost. He often sought sought out to those uh, whom society deemed unworthy or unclean, bringing them hope and inclusion in God's kingdom. In Luke chapter 15, Jesus tells three parables, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the prodigal son, each emphasizing God's relentless pursuit of those who are lost. The parable of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15 verses 11 to 32 is particularly poignant in illustrating God's love for the lost. The younger son squanders his inheritance in a distant country, but eventually returns home, repentant and broken. His father, filled with compassion, runs to meet him, embraces him, and celebrates his return with a feast. This parable reveals the the depth of God's love and forgiveness, showing that no one is beyond redemption. Messianic Coming and Expectation In the first century, There was a strong expectation of the Messiah among the Jewish people. This expectation varied. Some anticipated a political Messiah who would liberate the Jews from the Roman rule, while others, particularly Christians, saw the Messiah as the suffering servant prophesied in Isaiah. This diversity of expectation is evident in the differing reactions to Jesus' ministry. While some embraced him as the promised Savior, others rejected him because he did not conform to their expectations of a political deliverer. The Christian understanding of the Messiah as a suffering servant is rooted in passages like Isaiah chapter 53, which speaks of a figure who bears the sins of many and is afflicted for their transgressions. Jesus embodies this role through his life, death, and resurrection, fulfilling the prophecies and reinterpreting the concept of messianic deliverance in a spiritual rather than a political context. Discipleship Discipleship, as described by Jesus, requires readiness for a life of insecurity and sacrifice, 
in Luke uh, chapter 9, verse 58, Jesus says, The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. This statement underscores the transient and uncertain nature of following Jesus. He emphasizes that the proclamation of the kingdom must take precedence over all personal concerns. In Luke chapter 9, verse 60, Jesus tells the potential disciple to leave the dead to bury their own dead, highlighting the urgency and paramount importance of the mission over customary social obligations. The cost of discipleship is further elaborated in Luke chapter 14, verses 26 to 27 where Jesus says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. This stark language emphasizes the total commitment required to follow Jesus. The term hate here is understood as loving less in comparison to the love and allegiance one must have for Jesus. Discipleship also involves a willingness to endure suffering and persecution for the sake of the kingdom. In Luke chapter 21 verses 12 to 19, Jesus warns his disciples about the trials they will face, including being handed over to synagogues, prisons, and brought before kings and governors. He encourages them to stand firm, prom promising that not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm and you will win life. This assurance underscores the ultimate reward of eternal life for those who remain faithful despite adversity. Conclusion The themes presented in Luke's Gospel provide a comprehensive understanding of Jesus' ministry and the nature of the kingdom of God. Servanthood, faith, concern for the poor and oppressed, the mission to the Gentiles, and the call to reach the least, last, and lost are central to Jesus' teachings and actions. These themes highlight the inclusivity, compassion, and radical commitment that characterize the kingdom of God. The messianic expectations and the demands of discipleship further illuminate the tra transformative journey that Jesus calls his followers to embark on. Through these themes, Luke's Gospel challenges readers to embrace a life of service, faith, and unwavering commitment to the values of God's kingdom. Invitation, Participation in Mission Introduction the mission of Jesus was not a solitary endeavor. From the outset of his ministry, Jesus involved others, preparing them to continue his work after his departure. This collaborative approach is vividly illustrated in the Gospel of Luke, particularly in the sending out of the 70 disciples. This section explores how Jesus strategically involved others in his mission and the implications of discipleship, emphasizing the commitment and sacrifices required to follow him. Jesus involves others in his mission. The Sending of the Seventy In Luke chapter 10, we find a detailed account of Jesus sending out seventy disciples. This event highlights Jesus' strategy of involving others in his mission. The choice of 70 is significant, symbolizing a comprehensive mission to the world, reflecting the 70 nations mentioned in Genesis 10. By sending out the 70, Jesus demonstrates that his message is not confined to Israel but is intended for all the nations. Jesus instructs these disciples to travel light, telling them, Carry no purse no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. This directive emphasizes the urgency and focus required for their mission. They are to depend entirely on God's provision and the hospitality of those they encounter. This reliance on God serves to strengthen their faith 
and underscores the principle that God provides for those who serve, who serve Him. The disciples are also given specific instructions on how to conduct themselves. They are to heal the sick and proclaim that the kingdom of God has come near in Luke 10 verse 9. Their mission is both spiritual and practical, involving acts of compassion and the proclamation of the gospel. This dual focus reflects the holistic nature of Jesus' ministry, which addresses both physical and spiritual needs. The success of their mission is reported with joy. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. In Luke 10, 17. Jesus affirms their experiences but reminds them that their primary joy should come from their relationship with God. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This statement emphasizes that the ultimate reward of discipleship is not the power of, or success one might experience, but the assurance of eternal life with God. The Meaning and Cost of Discipleship the call to prioritize Jesus above all else. Following Christ demands significant sacrifices. In Luke chapter 14 verses 26 to 27, Jesus articulates the radical nature of discipleship. If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their course and follow me cannot be my disciple. This stark language emphasizes the necessity of prioritizing Jesus above all else, even familial relationships. The term hate here is understood in a relative sense, meaning to love less. Jesus is not ad advocating for animosity towards one's family but is highlighting the level of commitment and required to follow Him. Discipleship involves a reordering of priorities where allegiance to Jesus surpasses all other loyalties. This radical commitment ensures that nothing interferes with one's dedication to Christ and this mission. Carrying One's Cross Daily The requirement to carry one's cross daily in Luke chapter 14 verse 27 symbolizes a daily death to selfish desires and a willingness to bear reproach for Jesus' name. The cross, an instrument of torture and death, represents the suffering and persecution that disciples might face. By instructing his followers to carry their cross, Jesus is calling them to a life of self-denial and sacrificial love. Carrying the cross daily involves a constant readiness to endure hardship for the sake of the gospel. It means living a life that reflects the values of the kingdom of God, often in opposition to societal norms and expectations. This commitment to the way of the cross requires an inner transformation, aligning one's desires and actions with the teachings of Jesus. The Parable of the Cost of Building a Tower To illustrate the cost of discipleship, Jesus tells the, the parable to, of the builder. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Would you first sit down and estimate the cost of, to see if you have enough money to complete it? This par parable emphasizes the importance of understanding and accepting the cost before committing to discipleship. Just as a builder assesses the cost before starting construction, potential disciples must consider the sacrifices involved in following Jesus. The, par the parable of the king going to war. Another parable Jesus uses to explain the cost of discipleship is that of a king going to war. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Would he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to, to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? 
This parable highlights the necessity of strategic planning and the acknowledgement of the challenges one will face. In the context of discipleship, it underscores the need for a realistic understanding of the demands and sacrifices required to follow Jesus. The reward of discipleship. Despite the high cost, Jesus also promises great rewards for those who faithfully follow him. In Luke chapter 18 uh, verses 29 to 30, Jesus assures his disciples, truly, truly I tell you, no one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come, to, to come eternal life. This promise highlights that the sacrifices made in this life will be abundantly rewarded both now and eternity. Conclusion Then the involvement of others in Jesus' mission and the call to discipleship underscore the communal and participatory nature of the kingdom of God. Jesus' strategy of sending out the 70 disciples illustrates the importance of teamwork reliance on God's provision, and a holistic approach to ministry. The call to discipleship with its emphasis on prioritizing above all else and the willingness to endure hardship defines the radical commitment required to follow Christ. Understanding the meaning and cost of discipleship is crucial for anyone considering a commitment to follow Jesus. It involves a total reordering of one's life, aligning it with the values and mission of the Kingdom of God. Despite the significant sacrifices required, the rewards of discipleship, both in this life and in the life to come, make it a journey worth undertaking. Through the teachings in Luke's Gospel, we are invited to embrace the call to follow Jesus wholeheartedly participating in his mission to bring God's love and salvation to the world. The message, Jesus redefines holiness. Introduction In the Gospels, Jesus often redefines and expands upon traditional Jewish concepts, particularly concerning holiness. Traditional Jewish piety equated holiness with separation from uncleanness. This separation was meant to maintain ritual purity and avoid defilement. However, Jesus challenges this notion by presenting a radical definition, redefinition of holiness that emphasizes inclusivity, compassion, and impartiality. Through his teachings and actions, Jesus demonstrated, demonstrates that true holiness involves extending benefaction and welcome to those marginalized by the old system. Traditional Jewish Understanding of Holiness In Jewish tradition, holiness was closely associated with ritual purity and separation from anything deemed unclean. The Law of Moses contained numerous regulations about what was clean and unclean, impacting various aspects of daily life, including diet, clothing, and social in interactions. For example, contact with a dead body or certain diseases rendered a person ceremonially unclean, requiring purification rituals before they could participate in communal worship. The Pharisees in particular were known for their strict adherence to these purity laws. They believed that Maintaining ritual purity was essential for personal holiness and communal identity. The separation extended to social interactions where groups such as Samaritans, Gentiles, and certain classes of Jews, example tax collectors and sinners, were avoided to prevent defilement. Jesus redefines holiness. Jesus' approach to holiness con contrasts sharply with the traditional Jewish understanding. He emphasizes that holiness is not about separation but about inclusion, mercy, and love. Jesus teaches that true holiness is found in how we 
treat others, especially those whom society has marginalized. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus states, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. This beatitude highlights that mercy and compassion are at the heart of holiness. Jesus embodies this principle throughout his ministry. Frequently interacting with those considered unclean or sinful by societal standards. He heals lepers, dines with tax collectors, and converses with Samaritans, demonstrating that God's love transcends human-made boundaries. Example, the Good Samaritan. One of the most powerful illustrations of Jesus as the definition of holiness is the parable of the Good Samaritan uh, in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. This parable is told in response to a lawyer who asks Jesus, and who is and who is my neighbor, seeking to just justify himself after Jesus affirmed that loving one's neighbor is central to inheriting eternal life. The Parable of the Good Samaritan In the parable, a man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho is attacked by robbers, stripped, beaten, and left half dead. A priest and a Levite, both respected religious figures, passed by the injured man without offering help. Their actions reflect the traditional focus of ritual purity, as touching a potentially dead body would render them unclean. However, a Samaritan considered an outcast and enemy by the Jews stops to help the injured man. He treats the man's wounds with oil and wine, bandages him and takes him to an inn where he continues to care for him. The Samaritan even pays for the man's stay and promises to cover any additional expense upon his return. The Defining Holiness Through Compassion The actions of the Samaritan illustrate the essence of uh, Jesus' redefined holiness. Despite being considered unclean and outside the bounds of Jewish religions, religious life, the Samaritan ex exemplifies true neighborly love and mercy. He does not let cultural or religious barriers prevent him from showing compassion. Instead, he sees the injured, the injured man as a fellow human in need and responds with immediate and practical care. Jesus concludes the parable by asking, Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? robbers? The lawyer answers, The one who had mercy on him. Jesus then instructs, Go and do likewise. This directive challenges listeners to, impact, to embrace a broader, more inclusive understanding of holiness, one that prioritizes mercy over ritual purity. Implications for Modern Leadership The redefinition of holiness and has profound implications for modern discipleship. This Jesus calls his followers to a radical inclusivity that breaks down barriers of race, class, and religion. This inclusivity requires actively seeking out and serving those marginalized uh, by society. Embracing inclusivity and impartiality. In today's context, this means being open to people from all walks of life, showing them the same love and compassion that Jesus demonstrated. It involves challenging societal norms and prejudices that exclude or marginalize individuals based on their background status or circumstances. For Christians, this may involve engaging in social justice initiatives, advocating for the rights of the oppressed, and providing practical support to those in need. Practicing Compassionate Holiness Jesus' teaching on compassion, compassionate holiness calls for a shift in focus from maintaining personal purity to actively practicing love and mercy. This means prioritizing relationships over rituals and people over procedures. 
It involves seeing every person as a child of God, deserving of dignity and respect, regardless of their outward condition or societal status. Conclusion Jesus' redefinition of holiness as inclusivity and impartiality challenges traditional notions of separation and ritual, ritual purity. Through His teachings and actions, particularly the parable of the Good Samaritan, Jesus demonstrates that true holiness is found in extending mercy and compassion to all, especially those marginalized by society. For modern disciples, this redefined holiness calls for a commitment to inclusivity, active compassion, and a willingness to break down barriers that divide people. By embracing this vision of holiness, Christians can more fully reflect the love and grace of God in their lives and communities. Seeking the Lost, the Parable of the Prodigal Son Introduction The parable of the prodigal son found in Luke chapter 15 verses 11 to 32 is one of the most profound and well-loved stories in the Bible. It illustrates the father's boundless love and willingness to restore a repentant sinner. This parable, unique to the Gospel of Luke, captures the essence of God's grace, forgiveness, and personal attentiveness towards each individual. Through this story, Jesus reveals the heart of God towards those who are lost and the joy that comes with their return. The context of the parable Before delving into the parable itself, it is important to understand its context. Jesus tells his uh, this parable in response to the Pharisees and scribes who were criticizing him for welcoming and eating with sinners. In Luke chapter 15, verse, verses 1 to 2, we read, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This band welcomes sinners and eats with them. In response, Jesus tells the three parables, the lost, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son, each emphasizing God's relentless pursuit of the lost, and the joy in their restoration. The parable of the prodigal son. The departure of the younger son. The parable begins with the younger son who asks his father for his, for his share of the inheritance. This request is highly unusual and disrespectful as it essentially wishes the father dead. Nevertheless, the father grants his request and the younger son takes his, in, his inheritance and travels to a distant country where he squanders it in reckless living. In this distant land, the younger son experiences the harsh consequences of his, of his actions. A severe famine strikes and he finds himself in dire need. He takes a job feeding pigs, which is degrading for a Jew, highlighting his fall from Greece from grace. Eventually, he comes to his senses, realizing that his father's servants have more than enough food while he is starving. He decides to return home, repentant and humbled, planning to ask his father to take him back as a hired servant. The father's response. As the younger son approaches home, the parable uh, takes a remar remarkable turn. Well, but uh, while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. This image of the father running to embrace his son is powerful. In Middle, in Middle Eastern culture, it was considered undignified for an elderly man to run. Yet, the father's love and uh, eagerness to welcome his son override cultural norms and dignity. The son begins his prepared pitch of repentance, but the father interrupts, commanding his servants to bring the best robe, a ring, and sandals to kill the fattened calf for a celebration. 
This action signify full rest- restoration and honor. The robe uh, symbolizes dignity, the ring represents authority, and the sandals denote sonship. A servant typically did, uh, did, uh, did not wear sandals. The elder son's reaction. The parable does not end with celebration. It continues with the reaction of the elder son who is angered and refuses to join the festivities. He confronts his father expressing his resentment for never receiving such a celebration despite his years of loyal service. The father gently responds, My son, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because his brother, this brother of yours, was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. This comes from Luke chapter 15, verses 31 to 32. Themes and lessons from the Bible God's boundless love and forgiveness. The central theme of the parable is the boundless love and forgiveness of God. The Father's actions reflect God's eagerness to forgive and restore those who repent regardless of their past transgressions. This parable assures us that no matter how far we have strayed, God is always ready to welcome us back with open arms. The Joy of Repentance and Restoration The celebration in the parable highlighting the joy that accompanies the repentance and restoration Jesus emphasizes that there is great rejoicing in heaven over the one sinner who repents. This joy underscores the value God places on each individual and the the importance of turning back to Him. The dangers of righteousness. The elder son represents the Pharisees and the scribes who prided themselves on their righteousness and looked down on sinners. His anger and refusal to join the, ce- the celebration reflect a heart that is distant from the Father's love and compassion. This part of the parable warns against the dangers of self-righteousness and uh, the importance of sharing in God's joy over the repentance of others. The Personal Attentiveness of God Throughout the parable, the Father's actions demonstrate personal attentiveness and care. He sees his son while he is still a long way off, turns to meet him, and restores him fully. His atten- this attentiveness mirrors God's intimate knowledge of and concern for each of his children. God is not a distant or indifferent deity, but a loving Father who is deeply involved in our lives. Application for Modern Discipleship The parable of the prodigal son offers several important lessons for modern discipleship. As as followers of Christ, we are called to embody the same love, forgiveness, and joy that the Father in the parable demonstrates. This involves 1. Embracing a heart of compassion. We must cultivate a heart of compassion that mirrors God's love for the lost. This means being willing to forgive those who have wronged us and welcoming them back with open arms. It also involves reaching out to those who are marginalized and offering them the hope of restoration. Celebrating Repentance We should rejoice in the repentance and restoration of others rather than harboring resentment or jealousy. This celebration reflects the heart of God and encourages others to turn back to Him. By celebrating the victories of others, we foster a community of grace and acceptance. Avoiding Self-Righteousness righteousness. We must guard against self-righteousness and the tendency to look down on others. The elder son's attitude serves as a cautionary example. True discipleship involves recognizing our own need for grace and uh, extending that grace to others. Demonstrating God's personal attentiveness. A modern disciple, as modern disciples, we are called to reflect God's personal attentiveness 
in our relationships. This means being present, attentive, and caring towards others, showing them that they are valued and loved. By doing so, we become conduits of God's love and grace. Conclusion The parable of the prodigal son is a profound illustration of God's love, forgiveness, and joy in the restoration of the lost. It challenges us to redefine our understanding of holiness and embrace a life marked by compassion, celebration, and humility. The Messiah has come to restore those who are lost, and He invites His disciples to participate in this mission. Through our works and the grace of, this, of discipleship, we contribute to building the kingdom of God, reflecting Jesus' teachings and the transformation He brings. This message of the parables is timeless, offering hope and assurance that no one is beyond the reach of God's love. As we seek to follow Christ, let us embody the Father's heart, extending grace and welcome to all who return to the Father. In doing so, we fulfill our calling as disciples and participate in the joyous work of reconcile, of reconciliation and restoration. Thank you for joining us in today's episode where we explore Jesus' journey to Jerusalem and the cost of discipleship. As we have seen, Jesus' teaching and his resolute determination to fulfill his mission underscore the formation of the church and the call to follow him. Stay tuned for our next episode where we'll delve into the kingship and sacrifice, the climax of messianic fulfillment, examining Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem and the ultimate significance of his passion and resurrection. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share so you don't miss out. See you in the next episode.